Hello friend! Welcome back for another plan with me video. This week I am setting up November in my bullet journal. As you can see, I had a little bit of trouble lighting my candle before I started filming, but I got it lit. It's called A Thousand Wishes and it's a Bath and Body Works candle. For the setup, I have brand new markers. They are dual tip markers and I, I'm not really sure how to pronounce the name. I think it's Heathrone. I got them on Amazon. I got a pack of 120 and I just labeled them myself with a little um, Avery rectangular label that I colored on because the color of the marker does not usually match the cap. So quickly flipping through my October spread, if you guys saw that Plan With Me video, you know that it was Mousy Mouse and Toby the Turtle trick-or-treating and doing some various fall activities. And I even experimented with a new weekly layout that I have decided is my new favorite. So I know I said that the one I used at the beginning of the month was probably what I would continue using, but I decided to experiment and decided to start a new one. So I'll talk about that when I set up my first November weekly. But right now I am starting with the cover page for November. And I asked you guys and also posted in one of the Facebook groups I'm in asking for suggestions on what the adventure or scene should be for November. And I got a lot of really great ideas, so I kind of combined all of them, or tried to pick a couple. Um, but for the cover page, I have decided to go with Mousy Mouse and her parents getting family photos taken. The theme of family was suggested a lot for November, with Thanksgiving being a very popular time to gather with family, and I decided I really liked that idea. So I drew Mousy Mouse, her mom, and her dad getting their picture taken. And they are all dressed up for the occasion. Normally, I do not draw them with clothing, but since Mousy Mouse and her family are white mice, I decided that I needed a little bit extra on the page, otherwise it was three white mice on a white page and there just wasn't a lot going on, so I decided to give them cute little outfits. And I also wanted to use my new markers, which is another reason why I decided to put them in clothing. I wanted to be able to experiment and see how my journal holds up to the markers. And I also decided to use washi tape, which is also not something I typically use. So I think I experiment a lot in this video, which I had a lot of fun with and learned a few things along the way. So I took out my washi tape and what I've seen other bullet journalers do is they use the washi tape to kind of color in different details of their photo. So you'll see what I'm doing here for um, Mousy Mouse's dad's shirt is I have this plaid washi tape that I stuck down and right now I'm sticking it down for the collar and you stick it down to cover the entire area you want to fill in and then I use an exacto knife to cut around the edges and then peel the remaining washi tape away so that it's just inside of the lines and I do this whole thing for his shirt and I just make sure to line up the pattern as I stick more down so that it looks like one continuous pattern rather than it being a mismatched shirt. This was a lot more complicated than I hoped it would be. It's kind of fiddly and I would recommend trying this in large areas rather than trying to get a lot of detail with the tape because, like I said, it just gets really fiddly. And I originally planned to do this exact same thing on all three mice, but decided that the mom's shirt had a lot of tiny areas and I was just not up for fiddling with those small areas. So I only ended up doing it for the dad's shirt and Mousy Mouse's overall dress. Thing. 
which you'll see in a little bit. Then I took a thicker fine liner and just went back over the edges so that they stood out more. And I tested to see how well it dries on the washi tape and was second guessing whether I should go get a Sharpie, but to be honest, I have no idea where my black Sharpie is. So I was like, I'll just cross my fingers and hope it doesn't smudge and that it dries eventually. So, um, my final report is that my fine liners do dry on washi tape, you just have to give them a little while to set. So there's a little bit of smudging, but I'm okay with that. And overall, I really love how his shirt came out. It looks like a really nice plaid shirt, so it was worth the struggle. And like I said, I decided not to fiddle with that for Mousy Mouse's mom's shirt, and I just decided to leave it in yellow. But I decided I wanted to do it still for Mousy Mouse, so I gave her a blue dress with a white shirt underneath, and I added this um, washi tape that has small gold hearts. And you can't see it so well on the camera, but they're really pretty in person, and the blue shows through a little bit, which is why I colored it in blue first rather than doing it over the white paper like I did for the dad's shirt. I fought a lot to get the straps of her dress done, so by the end of this, I was kind of overdoing the washi tape to color in, but I'm really happy with how it turned out, so it was worth it overall. Like I said before, my tips would be use washi tape to cover large areas rather than fine detail, and I guess also test out your fine liners to see if they work and dry on top of washi tape. Then I colored in the pumpkins with my new markers. I am really happy with these markers. You will see that they bleed through my paper, but that's because of the journal that I'm using and not because of the markers. And I used colored pencil to color in their ears because I really like the subtlety of the peachy color pink that I've been using with my colored pencils. And marker would have been too bright and then to give them a little bit more contrast with the background, since they are white mice, I colored in kind of a sky blue effect in the background. And there you have it! Mousy Mouse and her parents have their family photo taken, and I think it came out so nice. I'm really, really pleased with it. And moving on to the left side of the page, I am doing another quote page this month, and my quote says, pumpkin kisses and harvest wishes. Again, I used my markers to do the calligraphy brush lettering for kisses and wishes. And I used the fine liner tip from my markers to write pumpkin and, and harvest. <laughs> I always find it funny when I'm trying to say and two times in a row. <laughs> It's just amusing to me. Then I drew some messy circles around the outside, and that was that. I'm doing another Dutch door. Um, my overall thoughts on Dutch doors is I think they would be a lot nicer in a journal with thicker pages. So they don't really work as a bookmark for my journal, but I still really like them. I think they're really cute. So I decided to do the Dutch door again and just cut in five grid spaces off from the side. And like I said, my journal bled through. I'm using a very thin papered journal. I do not know the GSM of this one. It's an artist's loft bullet journal from Michaels. And I've already picked up my journal for 2021. I've decided I'm starting a new journal, even though there will be pages left over in this one. And the journal that I've picked up from Amazon has 160 GSM paper, so I will not have this problem and I'll be able to utilize my markers much more. For the rest of this setup, I decided to focus mainly on colored pencils because the shadowing and the bleeding and the ghosting is just gonna drive me crazy. Um, it's not a deal breaker because I don't really utilize this calendar spread, so that'll be okay for now. 
And speaking of this calendar spread, I mentioned in my last video that I wasn't even sure if I was going to use one for the rest of the year, but I'm holding out for a little while longer, seeing if maybe condensing it to one page will be more useful. So I've combined the calendar view with the traditional calendar list. So my plan is to just put little colored dots or something, maybe symbols in the calendar view and then coordinate it down below in the list so that I can easily see it from a glance, but I certainly can't fit much detail into the smaller calendar layout. But using a two page layout just seems wasteful since I don't get much use out of my calendar overviews. Now looking over at the right side of this spread is a page that I do get a lot of use out of. It's split up into three sections. The top is for income and savings, the middle is for recipes and meal ideas, and the bottom is my month in messages. And then I wrote the November title on that page as well. I keep my Dutch door flipped open to the cover page so that I can make sure it's visible when I have that open. And that was it for that spread. I have gone back and added some drop shadows. Um, they're not in any of my footage, so you won't be able to see that until the flip through next month, but um, it looks pretty similar to the end result without drop shadows. So now we are moving over to another very useful spread for me. And many bullet journals, bullet journalers <laughs> call this a brain dump. And Torin Marie, who is a YouTuber that I am just obsessed with, every time she posts on YouTube, I just like cannot wait to watch. Um, her voice is soothing, her artwork is gorgeous, and I love her setups. So she calls this a mind map, and I actually like that wording a lot better. So I have called this my mind map as well. And it's just a place for me to jot down thoughts or things I have to get to or things I want to bring up with someone that I can't really find a place for it elsewhere in my journal. And while I do get a lot of use out of it, I don't take up an entire page. So I decided to draw a nice scene of Mousy Mouse and her mom. Um, her mom is pushing her on a tree swing and I just thought it looked so cute. I'm really happy with that. And like I said, I opted for colored pencils with this because um, the markers just would have bled through. And I pulled out my washi tape again. I am not somebody who has ever really decorated with washi tape, but I've been having a lot of fun. I have these cute fall inspired washi tapes and I was excited to be able to use those. I have way too much washi tape for somebody who does not really use it, so I've decided to try using it and see how that goes. I will go back and color in my mind map page a bit more, but I am setting up the right side of the spread right now, which is a brand new spread for me that I am calling my Just For Me spread. I got the idea from Jashi Corin, who is another YouTuber who I also really enjoy. And she does a self-care bingo board where each square has a different idea for self-care. And personally, I just decided not to go with the self-care title because um, this doesn't represent self-care to me. This represents things that I want to do that I get a lot of enjoyment out of and it's things that I do purely because I want to and not because somebody else wants me to or because I have to. And self-care to me represents even the things that you do on a daily basis, like brush your teeth and take a shower and just kind of make sure that you are taking care of yourself. And this is a little bit more on, I don't wanna use the indulgent side. I don't really care for that wording, but it's just the things that are extras that I want to be able to do throughout the month. So it's my just for me board. And I only have three ideas right now, 
take a bath, have afternoon tea, and take a Skillshare class. Um, as I think of more, I'll be filling in more squares of my board. So if you have any suggestions, please drop them in the comments. I would love to hear your ideas of things you think I should add or maybe what you would include in yours. And at the bottom of the page, I just added a quote, self-care is giving the world the best of you instead of what's left of you, which I just really loved and it resonated so much and I thought it was a perfect addition to this spread. And then I grabbed my colored pencils and colored in the rest of the drawing on my mind map page. And now we flip over to my first weekly setup in November. And this was another idea adapted from Tor and Marie. It's kind of adapted from a lot of bullet journalers. This uh, Rolling Weeklies, I believe it is called, is really popular right now in the bullet journal community. And I liked the way it looks, didn't think it would work for me, and then decided to try it anyway and it actually ended up working really well. So I have kept my vertical hourly layout on the left-hand side where each day gets a box and that's where I put down my work schedule, any other appointments or things, phone calls, meetings, etc., that are time specific so that I can see my day at a glance. I really, really love having that. That is a must for me. Um, and since I don't have school on Saturday and Sundays, and I don't work on Saturday and Sundays, I'm okay having those boxes much smaller. So then on the right hand side is where I put the running task list for the entire week. So up at the top, I have the letters for Monday through Sunday, and then I have tasks written up there. And the way that works is I will write what the task is underneath the task portion of the column, and then I'll mark a little dot next to the day that that task is due. So if I have a homework assignment due on a Friday, it gets a dot under the Friday column, and the description of the homework assignment goes in the tasks column. Now let's say I started the task on Monday. I will draw an open circle on Monday so I know it has started, and once it's complete, I will connect the two dots and do a little check mark. There are a ton of videos about this. Um, I believe it's originally called the Alistair method. I highly recommend doing a YouTube search. If you would like me to do a video on how I personally have been utilizing this, let me know in the comments and I can get one of those set up for you. And I have also found out that I do still have space for a little doodle at the bottom. Um, the past couple weeks of October, I didn't put any drawings because I wasn't sure that there would be space, but I never use up a full page of tasks. So I've done a little doodle of Mousy Mouse and her dad cuddling up under a blanket in front of the fire. And then there is also space left over for a separate right hand column, which I have split up into three categories. The top is my calendar. I always like to have that so I can visualize which week of the month I'm in. Um, so I just wrote out all of the dates and then outlined it with my gold pen. I really wanted to use my gold pen this month and I couldn't really figure out how to incorporate it in the other spreads so I'm finally using it for this weekly. And then my little middle section is where I plan out my meal options for the week. Um, I like to check on Sundays and make sure that I have everything I'm going to need for the week because my week is just crazy busy. So I want to make sure that I know what my options are so that I make sure I have enough so that I don't have to worry about it during the week. And then in the bottom, I have my kind of school or hours of schoolwork overview. And 
the way that my school program works, we have Zoom lectures, but we also have asynchronous lecture. Oh, sorry, asynchronous. I always mispronounce that. We have asynchronous lectures that we have to do online. And I like to keep track of how many hours I'm spending on schoolwork outside of my lectures so I can just keep track and I can have a general idea of how much time on average I'm spending. I did discover that I had been leaving eight grid spaces and I only left seven grid spaces this week. Um, I thought about fixing it, but I decided to go with a workaround and just put the initials for my courses outside of the box. But that's why I'm flipping back and forth so often. I was trying to figure out how to fix it. And that's it for this setup. Um, as of right now, I plan to continue utilizing this weekly spread for the full month, but that's what I said last time. <laughs> I ended up switching it out, so we'll see. But this worked out really well, and I'm so happy with how the drawing turned out too. And I'm glad I got to use my gold pen. I'm just very happy this month <laughs> with how everything turned out. And of course, I highlighted the week so that I can quickly see that, and I highlighted all of the days of the week in their columns. And that was it. So now we're on to the flip through. As always, thank you so much for watching this video and taking on this bullet journal adventure with me. If you have ideas for December, please let me know. The adventures of Mousy Mouse and Toby will continue and I'd love to get your ideas. And if you've enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate a little thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss future video uploads. As always, whatever combination of buttons you choose to click, I am truly grateful sharing this bullet journey with you. Happy planning and see you next time.